Hey folks, this is Gray here, and uh, this is kind of an impromptu video. I'm going to show you how I store pancake mix or batter uh, in my pantry. Uh, the wife had asked me, she's like, what are you doing? And I said, I'm getting ready to store the pancake and process the pancake batter and mix uh, and put it into the pantry. And she's like, uh, why don't you grab uh, and record that and share it to your viewers? And I was like, oh, I never thought about that. And she's like, well, just, uh, you know, you're always doing this stuff. Why don't you just put it on the video? and uh, share it with your viewers. Maybe some folks will get some value out of that uh, and to see how you store pancake mix in itself. So uh, I'm gonna show you my process. We'll go through the whole thing. Shouldn't be too long. It's like I said, quite simple, uh, but maybe some folks will learn something from what I'm showing you here today. All right, well, first and foremost, of course, you need some pancake batter, right? Uh, and uh, so I'm gonna, I, I got three of them. Uh, I've already processed one. Uh, and that's when the wife caught me and said, hey, uh, why don't you video the rest of your process? And I was like, yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I do uh, print my own labels uh, for my jars. Um, I guess I should say one thing foremost is I am a very neat and tidy person. So everything is clean and sanitized and all that stuff like that. I know someone uh, may mention that. Uh, I'm very meticulous in the things that I do. But so everything is clean and ready to go. Um, people probably may be asking why I'm not in the kitchen. Well, I just, I like it out here. This is my area where I process lots of food. I have several different stations where I put food at, uh, and, uh, process things depending on what it is being that this is just a very simple process. I set myself up here, especially if it's a small batch. All right. So of course you got to have the handy dandy food saver, uh, and the attachment that's made for your jars to seal that. Uh, I'm assuming most folks uh, that are into long-term food storage or food preservation in general would have one of these devices here. And of course, uh, you want to have some jars. Uh, I'm using larger quart size jars, of course, because uh, they hold more. And this works for me when I store this stuff here. Uh, this works. This will save you so much trouble, folks, if you have one of these, because this makes life easy if you just throw that on there uh, when you're pouring your thing so that you don't make a mess. So having one of these funnels uh, is great. Uh, of course, your lids. Uh, I'm trying to think what else do I got here. Uh, like I said, I got my stickers and some desiccant. Uh, these are the silica gels. So what's great about these is um, I open it up already. Usually I just vacuum seal this thing when I'm done uh, because you want to keep them away from any type of moisture, of course. Uh, but you can use these over and over again for quite some time. Uh, if you really want to, I mean, there's a videos on it out there, but you basically just either you can microwave these or you can bake them in the oven for a short period of time. Uh, these are reusable uh, and they come in handy uh, to keep moisture out of stuff like powders and stuff. This uh, is a lot different than an O2 absorber. This is a moisture absorber because moisture uh, is the evil to pancake batter. And that's what you want to you know, prevent. So having a vacuum seal through the jar and a moisture absorber in there. Some folks may ask, well, Gray, what size are those? These are five grammers. These guys here, I don't know if it says it on there. It probably doesn't say that. It just says don't eat, which I'm assuming most people don't. But anyways, these are five grams. This is heavy, heavy, heavy overkill for what I'm doing. But if you guys have watched my videos in the past when it comes to food storage, I do everything in overkill. So I always like to be safe. Uh, then sorry, you know. Other than that, that's the tools that you're gonna have there with you. Like I said, this is pretty much it. So let's get to uh, work, right? I guess I should have mentioned uh, a pair of scissors comes in handy as well. Uh, and the way I cut my bag is I just wanna cut the corner of that bag. So I kind of grab me a little spot like that and then I'll cut that off here and put that to the side there. And uh, so that it kind of has like a nice pour right there. Uh, so that when I'm putting this on here, it's very easy to kind of fill this up. Now, again, this is very impromptu, so this is not going to be the most professional production uh, as you would see, but it's a real life thing that I do on a consistent basis. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start pouring my pancake batter into this thing here. And uh, I've never done this before on camera, so hopefully I don't make a mess trying to kind of see what I'm doing and recording at the same time. But anyways, I'm trying to keep it as focused as I can. Once I get up there, to about there, what I'm going to do is going to go ahead and shake that down a bit. I am making a bit of a mess. So, all I'm doing is shaking it to have the, the batter kind of, you know, settle pretty much. And then between each thing, as you can see, I have a little bit of batter there. I could wipe it down, uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and process all my uh, batter 
uh, while I'm doing this. And if you get pretty good at doing it, you'll just kind of know where you want to go. I'm going to knock that off real quick and move this out the way. Kind of give you guys an idea of how high I go. I'm actually going to go up to the rim here. So I got a little bit more to go. Go ahead and put that back on there. And uh, I mean, honestly, it's a, like, again, very simple process. Uh, sometimes you may make a mess the first go around. Uh, and you can see I've kind of got half that batter in there. Go ahead and process that down. Again, shaking it out. I do this with the thing on there. So when I lift it out, there's not much uh, mix on there. And I'm pretty sure there's plenty of videos on YouTube on this process. Everybody does their thing differently. Uh, and go ahead and move that. And I'm happy. I'm happy where I have that jar at now. As you can see, it's pretty much filled to the brim. I'm trying to hold it sideways so that you guys can see it right there. I can shake it down a little bit more just to kind of get an idea. But I just want to make it sure it's in there because I want to leave room for the desiccant. Now, some folks may have used bigger jars or whatnot in their process. But again, this is the silica gel packet that I'm kind of going to sit in there just like that at the top. Uh, just to prevent any moisture, I'm going to take my lid. And yes, my hands are washed. <laughs> just in case uh, anybody asks, I'm going to put that on there. And just give it a nice hand tight there. And uh, there's that. Now we're going to go ahead and vacuum seal it. I always like to make sure everything is nice and tight before I go to that process. And uh, let's go ahead and seal this bad boy up. All right, so now that we have that set up and I've taken off the ring here, I'm going to go ahead and turn my food saver on. And then I'm going to attach this to the top of that. But I don't think I can do it one-handed, so I'm going to grab the tripod. Another reason I didn't want to do it one-handed is because I want to make sure I get a nice seal on there. So I'm going to go ahead and put the head on top of this. I call this a vacuum head. There might be a technical term for it. I'm going to go ahead and put that on there. And then I'm going to make sure it's seated properly. And then I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Now, this is going to be a little loud, folks. Uh, but, you know, most vacuum sealers are. Once I verify that everything is nice and tight, I'll go ahead and screw on the cap. I'll put my label on, my pancake mix, buttermilk and date. Um, usually I'll pre-date these because that's I'm usually doing a batch of these things here. Um, shake it around, make sure everything is looking good, everything looks good. And I'll put this in the long-term pantry uh, and then we'll grab ones out as we need it. Uh, for this size, uh, usually this will last us, you know, a couple of months, uh, depending on how much pancakes or family or friends that we may have over. Uh, but to me, this is one of the easiest ways to store my pancake batter. Uh, is in a jar. People will use vacuum seal bags and stuff like that, but I like the jars just because we can put a scoop in here, and after that scoop, uh, you know, we just scoop it out, like instead of using like a scoop in the box, uh, we just scoop it out of here and then cover it back up, and I can always reseal it when I'm done, uh, and add, you know, swap out the desiccant packet, uh, and so on and so forth. Anyways, folks, to be quite honest, uh, usually what I do is I actually I get all my jars filled. This is how I do it. I just wanted to show you that one for demonstration purposes. Um, once I get them all filled and get everything that I want in there uh, and cap them, and then what I'll do is just to save myself some time, um, I will uh, process them all at one time just because it makes it easier. One thing I do is I do keep my jar lids down so that no dust or anything gets in there because you never know what's floating around in the air, but that's just my personal thing that I do. Uh, in itself. Uh, some people have other processes. I do want to show you guys one interesting thing, and that's this guy here. This was a little uh, gadget that I picked up a while ago, uh, and it's, I've always thought, well, you know, what about if I lose power and I still want to process food? So this is kind of a, a electronic, let me see what it says, yeah, electronic mason jar vacuum sealer, and uh, it does multiple sizes as well. And uh, basically, it kind of fits on top of the jar there. Let me see if I can stick that on there with one hand and not mess anything up. Press it down just like how you would do this here. I make that's on there nice and tight. Kind of push that down, push my button. And that'll go through its process there. Looks like I got pancake batter everywhere floating around. And that's going to seal that jar there. And actually puts a really good seal on there. A lot stronger than I thought it would be for an electronic thing. Um, it's just another gadget that I picked up just to kind of do things in case power goes out. Uh, it's quicker to charge that. 
uh, well, not quicker to charge it, but it's to have this as a backup in case something like this fails on me or I have an issue with the machine itself or if I don't have power or a power station to run this in, um, I kind of have like a battery powered unit to kind of seal my jars so that I can keep things going. All right, uh, when it stopped, this thing you can see that it kind of popped up a little bit to let me know it's done. I'll go ahead and remove this top piece here. And again, as you can see that there is no give uh, in this lid. We'll go ahead and try to make a mess. Nice and sealed. And again, like I said, there is no play in this lid. It's a very handy thing and you can kind of see that pressure on there, how it's kind of pushed in. Uh, hopefully you can see that on camera or whatnot, but it's nice and on there and tight. It doesn't, you know, come off. It would take some work to get that thing off there. So it does a good job. And again, like I said, we'll just go ahead and put our uh, ring around there, tighten that thing up, nice and hand tight, label it, and it would be good to go. All right, so we have all that done. And uh, like I said, this thing comes in super handy, especially if you're just doing something in a kitchen, you wanna move really quick without bringing out the whole food saver. I wanted to mention real quick that I've done uh, using the food saver with the vacuum seal bags uh, and whatnot for you know flour and pancake mix and other stuff like that. The main issue I have is that when the vacuum is pulling uh, on this bag, some of the powder will kind of come out uh, and clog up your vacuum sealer and uh, that creates an issue. Uh, I mean, you can clean it and get it all done, but why put yourself through that headache if you can just use some jars uh, instead? Uh, and for, especially for something like pancake mix, uh, people use flour, pancake mix, uh, rice. People do all kinds of things in the jars themselves. And uh, like I said, try to keep away from the headaches. Uh, I learned a long time ago, as you can see, there's, you can look in there, see how there's powder towards the edge of that, that seal up there and whatnot. This one doesn't have a label on this. I just pulled this out of the pantry not too long ago. Um, I think it was in a bag uh, that said, uh, I forget what the date on it was, but it's in a bag with other bags uh, that was put up. But anyways, uh, like I said, this works, but I prefer to use the jar method. And uh, it just seems to not create such an issue with my vacuum sealer and clog it up uh, like when I use uh, the vacuum seal bags themselves. Uh, I'm really curious uh, how many of you folks use the jar method. Um, some people may not like my labels uh, because, you know, if they stay on there for a long period of time, of course, they are they can be harder to get off. Uh, but to me, a little soap and water, I always get them off with a little scrub pad. Uh, it's just very easy to read and, and just to see, and that's why I like to use those like that. But uh, anyways, uh, looking forward to uh, seeing your guys' process. Uh, did you learn anything from this? Did it help anybody out? I hope uh, maybe someone picked up a tip or maybe someone was like, great, what is that thing? Um, if you want, I'll put a link down to the description. I think I can probably find it. Uh, it should be in my purchase history. Uh, I've had this thing for about a year now, I think. But uh, yeah, headache, not so much headache. Uh, and that's the way I process my pancake mix. All right, folks, so that's going to be wraps up the uh, how to store pancake uh, mix uh, in the pantry. Uh, look forward to reading your comments. Other than that, folks, remember, you are not alone. This is Gray Man. I'm out. I'll see you guys in a rebound. God bless. And again, thank you for taking the time to watch my videos.